So we're here to use this day as a day to commemorate the struggle and recognize the role of the masses, foremost, and their leader, in particular, Dr. King. And you think that that's doing justice to the history. The women's movement was motivated. The struggle against the oppression of gay people was motivated. The struggle for economic rights and economic justice of the working class in this country was spurred on after years of dormancy. The Afro-American struggle for freedom was advanced. And so we draw, express our appreciation for the example of Dr. King as an, as an individual, of demonstrating selfless devotion to the interests of the masses of people, and willingness to sacrifice. And we're here to celebrate a legacy of struggle. It's a day to remember and learn lessons and commemorate struggle, not to shop. And so we want to take this opportunity to remember and celebrate Dr. King and the modern civil rights movement and recognize its important role in history, but also the social movements of today. And in particular, the modern civil rights movement made many soldiers were not just workers and for church people, etc. But the youth SNCC, played an important, very important role. And so we're here to recognize youth warriors for justice in our own community. We are here to salute the courage, the devotion, the selflessness of those who got their arms broke. And let's bring a little water on the floor and honor of our ancestors and the essence of life. I will mention a couple of ancestors and then I want to hear you in the audience just uh, mention some of your ancestors and some of the people that you might have admired in history. It could be a historical figure, it could be a family member. And after I uh, bring to the Lord, let's say Ashe. Ashe. This is in honor of the ancestors that we're honoring tonight. That's a little wide. Just to step over. Okay. In, in honor of the ancestors, the main ancestors that we are honoring tonight, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King and the great work that he did over the years, say our shape. Our shape. I'll mention another one, Malcolm X, say our shape. Our shape. Elijah Muhammad. Our shape. Let me hear y'all mention some ancestors. Brother Park. Brothers and sisters, I think one of the things we want to do tonight is recognize the role that young people have played and continue to play in the struggle for racial, social, and economic justice. We are here tonight to celebrate the life of Dr. Martin Luther King. But I think it's important to remember that Dr. King was a young person when he started out on this road. When, when Dr. King came to Montgomery, Alabama, he was 26 years old. Talk about it. That's quite young. He was a young man. He was 26 already with a PhD. Many people don't know Dr. King finished high school at 15, finished undergraduate school at 19, was an ordained minister at 22, and received his PhD at 25. And he returned to Montgomery. He was 26 years old when he was asked to head up the Montgomery Improvement Association, the MIA. He refused at first because he wanted to be a preacher just like his daddy was. He didn't want to shake up the world. He wanted to bring people to church, save souls, and maybe get a big Cadillac like his daddy had. But fate had a different role for Martin Luther King. And as you know, he led the Montgomery bus boycott the largest, longest boycott in the history of the United States, 381 days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A bus company that 
by law had to sit black people from the 13th row back. That was the ordinance of the city yes, of Montgomery. Yes, yes. And if the bus became crowded, the black people in the back had to give up their seat for the white people. And in fact, Rosa Parks was sitting in the black section. Yes, yes. She was sitting in the black section when she was asked to give up her seat. Montgomery bus boycott lasted 381 days. 60,000 black people participated, refused to ride those buses and they broke the back of the Montgomery yeah. bus. Yeah. Dr. Yeah. King went on to lead the civil rights movement and he became the youngest person at the age of 35 years old, up to that time. And we know that the sister uh, Malala is now the youngest who received the Nobel Prize at 17, right? Yeah. But up until that time, Martin Luther King was the youngest person to receive the Nobel Peace Prize at age 35. The civil rights movement was very much a young people's movement. It was, it was, and as we right. remember Sister Rosa Parks, that's right. as Lisa reminds me, we must also remember Sister Claudette yes. Coleman. Yes. Yes. Rosa Parks was not the first. No. Claudette Coleman, nine months before Rosa Parks, yes in March of 1955, refused to give up her seat. And guess how old she was? 15 years old. 15 years old. And she refused to give up her seat on the bus. And she was arrested. And she wasn't put in juvenile hall. She was put in the adult jail yes. with adults. Yes. But she was 15 years old. The civil rights movement was very much a young people's movement. That's right. Because the South was a place of racial terror. That's right. That's right. You know, people, these revisionist historians want to reinterpret history and revise history and make you think that these were some quaint customs that we wanted to change. Yes. This was a system of yes. racial terror That's right. to hold black people in place That's right. as a super exploited class of people. And a lot of times it was hard to get adults to come out to protest That's right. because the system of segregation was an all-encompassing system. That's right. And those of you who go see the movie Selma will see how when people were caught protesting, they lose their job. That's right. That's right. That's Worse right. than that, they might lose their life. That's right. That's right. So many times in places like Albany, Georgia and Selma, Dr. King had to call on the young people. And when I say young, I'm not talking about 25. I'm talking about high school students right. were on those picket lines in Albany and in Selma right. and in other places throughout the South. Right. In fact, in some places, so many youth would participate in these demonstrations that they had to take the school stadium, the football stadium, and turn it into a jail yes. because the young people had the spirit to yes. fight. That's right. And that's why we're going to honor these young people today because they got the spirit yeah. to fight against the judgment. <laughs> young people all over the world make change. That's right. We know this from the Vietnam War. A terrible war led to the deaths of maybe as many as 3 million Vietnamese. That's right. And 56,000 American soldiers. That's right. You know how I started on this road? No. 47 years ago. Wow. 47 years ago, I was a student at Arts High. I was a freshman. Yes. I had just come in in the fall yes. of 1967. That previous spring, when I was an eighth grader at South 17th Street School, I was thrown out of school. <laughs> I was thrown out. I was. I threw rocks at the school and broke out the windows. Now today I would have went to jail. Don't stop here. Go straight to jail. <laughs> but I got to our High and I wanted to turn over a new leaf. So we had freshman orientation, right? And so freshman orientation, they bring out the head of the music department in front of the stage. This young man starts talking about the Vietnam War. Now I knew about 
the riots because I lived through it. Mm -hmm. I lived literally several blocks from where the riots started. I lived on 12th Street, the riots started on Fairmont and Springfield. I lived through that, but I'm going to tell you too, I didn't know nothing about the Vietnam War. <laughs> not at 12 years old. So this young fella starts talking about the Vietnam War. And the principal told him, David was his name, said, David, don't talk about the Vietnam War. Talk about the Halloween party and the UNICEF collection. <laughs> David keeps talking about the Vietnam War. The principal walks up on the stage, stands right here. David, take your seat. David continues to talk about the Vietnam War. The principal grabs David, and David grabs the principal, and they started wrestling in front of the freshman class in 1967 because David wanted to talk about the Vietnam War. So I'm sitting in the front row. Now, I came to Arts High to turn over a new leaf, right? <laughs> My, like this thing! The principal and the student government president fighting in front of the freshman class. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but that episode was the episode that told me that the student government could be something more than a Popularity Club. The Popcorn Kids is the only program in New Jersey that teaches true black history at the Irvington Library. Their trademark is the um, practicing of Kwanzaa every month of the year. Um, also, we have been honored by the City of Irvington and the State Senate. And um, at the Popcorn Kids, children really do have a voice. Ah. I'm going to share two poems with you guys today, and I'm going to dedicate one to um, Martin Luther King and the other one to the struggle that we're still in. So the first one is called No Justice, No Peace. And this poem was dedicated to Trayvon Martin at the time when Trayvon Martin was killed, but since then, the list has grown longer. So I dedicate this poem to all of the people that have been killed by police or wannabe police. <laughs> no justice, no peace. Young 17-year-old slain, shot dead in the street. And all he had was some Skittles and a can of tea. America, I thought, was supposed to be the land of the free. I guess not if you're young and black and wear a hoodie. No justice. She holds her head in her hands. Tears stain her face. She won't eat nor sleep. The floor she paced. Eyes bloodshot red from sleepless nights. Until her young son gets justice, she will continue to fight. No peace. We didn't have to know him to fight on his behalf. Something isn't right. No DNA, all white jury, father was a judge, you do the math. No justice. First black people went through slavery, dealt with chains and whips. He admitted to shooting Trayvon, not guilty verdict, case dismissed. How are we supposed to cope knowing that because of skin color, we won't get a fair trial? But if another race was shot, we would be the first to go down. No peace. It's sad to know that this mother will never again see her son. His life was taken by a wannabe cop with a gun. Talk about you. And the same person who took his life will still walk the streets. Mm. All Trayvon's mother has is a tombstone in six feet. Mm. No justice, no peace. Imagine if it was your son. What would you do? He was doing nothing but LWB living while black, like me and you. Yeah. No justice, no, no peace. Right. Yeah. 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 And 
second one that I'm going to do is dedicated to Martin Luther King and my favorite, Fannie Lou Hamer. All right. And all of the people that have come before us that carry the same dream for us to live peacefully. It's called My People. Beautiful, strong, courageous, hardworking. These are the words to describe my people. Born with unique features like high cheekbones and long legs, made to appreciate standing on the shoulders of great ancestors, built with women's blood, able to carry the weight of the world while wearing a smile. My people. Descendants of the great African continent. Skin like ebony or mocha or vanilla chai. Our style is flawless. Able to create masterpieces with the fabric the world has thrown at us. Intelligent, one of a kind, bridge builders. We make connections that are everlasting. My brothers, my sisters, we are the caretakers of the earth. We must continue the legacy of those who've come before us. Continue to be the keepers of our brothers and sisters. Lift up the world with one hand while holding on to traditions in the other. My people, able to go through trials and tribulations and come out triumphant. Let us not forget where we all began on that great African continent as one people. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to read the resolution. No, just read the resolution. Okay. Okay, uh, so this resolution is uh, county, and I'll try to read it. I'll read it quickly, but hopefully, so that everyone will hear because it is a very dynamic resolution. County of Essex, New Jersey. The Essex County Board of Chosen Freeholders hereby issues this resolution sponsored by freeholder Wayne L. Richardson, honoring the Newark Students Union. Yes. Whereas the Newark Students Union is a citywide organization founded by and for Newark students with the goals of protecting student rights, ensuring they receive a quality education, and empowering the student voice in the political process. And whereas the Newark Students Union, NSU, founded on November 1, 2012, is comprised of students who have articulated and continue to articulate the education issues from the perspective of Newark students. And whereas the expressed mission of the Newark Students Union is, we the students of the Newark Public Schools, in order to establish and protect our rights, form student unity, voice our concerns and grievances, promote active participation in the policy-making process, and to secure the integrity of our education for ourselves and for future students to establish the Newark Students' Union. And whereas the Newark Students' Union is inspired by its belief that for too long the policies that have been put into effect are or are being proposed have not or will not fully address the needs and issues that students in Newark face on a daily basis. NSU is determined not to accept the suggestion that they should allow the system to solve its problems rather than take, spec, uh, take I'm sorry, rather than take steps to effectuate change themselves. And whereas the Newark Student Union believes that if students are to reach their highest potential, they should have the right to have a form of representation that will enable them to achieve their fullest potential as future leaders in Newark and beyond. The Newark Students Union has engaged in and attended numerous activities and conferences both locally and nationally, including the Labor Notes Chicago Conference, Occupy NPS Sit-In, NPS Walkout 2014, 2014 LA Empowerment Education Conference, participation in recent mayoral debates as well as hosting its own debate, uh, NJ Edge March 27 protest, Stop One Newark protest, public comment at Newark Public School Board meetings, hosting parent hall and community meetings, NPS Boycott 2013, 2013 California Education Conference, and the Philadelphia Education Strike. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Essex County Board of Chosen Freeholders hereby commends the members of the Newark Students' Union for their determination and commitment to the basic tenets of civic responsibility 
advocacy, and responsible protest, and encourages them to continue to be involved in the political process as true students, I'm sorry, as true citizens, as true citizens of Newark, Essex County, the state of New Jersey, and the United States of America. Social Justice Award to students named for student activism and civil disobedience in the struggle for quality public education on this day of January 15, 2015. Yo. Anthony Kelly.
spaces like this need a there, there, there needs to be more spaces like this in our community. Amen. Where we can have community. Um, and as they were introducing us, I, I kept thinking about the sun hitting my face for those eight hours, <laughs> laying in that street, and holding on for my life because a cop was hurting my sister, you know. Um, so the, these things, you know, they're very important. and. They keep us grounded, and I just want to thank all y'all because without the community, we wouldn't be fighting at all. So, that's right. Hi to the people. Just because, you know, why not? <laughs> um, as being an NSU, one of the least amount of time as the rest, I'm really glad that I actually joined and that I actually get to met, meet so many great people. Right. And I would like to say that this fight isn't over. Right. It's almost as though we're doing like a victory dance at the end, but it's not just a victory. We have to keep going. We have to remember that this is just one step of the way and that we'll keep going and we'll keep fighting. In college, I'll keep doing this. Yeah. I'll do this yeah. in college. Yeah. Yeah. And you all help provide those steps. So thank you all very much. We love you all. Sorry to be here. Gabrielle's crying. Thank you. At this point, we will. Well, let me just say before closing our program. We've had many Dr. King celebrations, but I think this was one of the best we've had so far.